Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Total War Warhammer 2, uh, where we are about to engage in what might be the most difficult battle that we've fought in a long time, perhaps in the entirety of the campaign, maybe even more so than the, uh, the battle for Lord Croak. I'm expecting these dwarves to hold up pretty well, but there's only 18 units in the garrison, 17 units in the army. We have 60 units of lizards, or we almost have 60, hold on. Let's hire these guys. And since our wizard isn't going to make it here in time, we'll just grab one of these garbage <laughs> skink units, I guess. Okay, now we have 60. Uh, and we're just going to wear him down through sheer force. Oh, also, the sharp-eyed among you may have already noticed, but there was a patch yesterday after we after the episode came out that, for some reason, renamed this region. I mean, it was the, the name it had before, the Western Jungles, was wrong. It is not a jungle. Now it's the Southern Desert of Araby, which is much more correct. Uh, and it renamed the two uh, settlements within it. The patch didn't seem to have any other changes that are actually relevant to our game. It's kind of a strange thing for them to do. If they like, if these are the right names, why weren't these the names they had originally? I, I don't know. Uh, anyway, let's focus up here. So, we have to decide who wants to be the army that's going to engage the battle. Uh, one of, actually, who, who even do we have as an option? Okay, Yarik. And Krokgar can both reach Vulture Mountain with a normal move. Ratok cannot. Okay, so one of these two armies is going to be the one that engages. The way this is going to work is that the army we start the battle with is going to... We're going to get to set them up on the battlefield as normal. The other two armies are going to trickle in over time as reinforcements in a pretty uncontrollable manner. Uh, somewhat unpredictable and pretty uncontrollable. I think what's going to happen is that we're going to get 10 units from each of the two armies coming in. Uh, and then you're only allowed to have 40 units on the field at a time. So once we hit 40, stuff will stop coming in. And every time we lose a unit, another one will filter in. Um, that's going to make it pretty awkward to use our optimal strategy, which would involve just all of the flying units out there at the same time. I'm pretty sure the flying units are going to come in last. I think it's stuff from the... Uh, Things come in from the front of the formations. So we have to decide which army is going to be on the table at first. And I think, if I remember correctly... Organ Gun, Quarrelers, Quarrelers, Rangers, Thunderers, Thunderers, Thunderers... And the army inside has four units of Rangers, and yeah, okay. These are pretty ranged-heavy compositions. I think this time around we actually want to just smash through the, through the door and get in there and fight them as quickly as possible. So... Between Yarrick and Krokgar, whose army is better suited to that task? I think it's going to have to be Yarrick, because Yarrick has the better dinosaurs. He doesn't have as many sources, but he has more dinosaurs. Okay, let's do it. So we're going to take a little bit of attrition damage moving through the mountain. Uh, but you can see it's not that bad. We lost like four or five units off of the ground guys. We lost a little bit of health on the dinosaurs. Alright. Set up the siege, and that will remove the city's zone of control, so now we can move the rest of our armies right inside. Is that close enough? Do we have to put Ratok into march mode? No, oh, okay, we have the reinforcement lines from both of them. Cool, so his units will not show up tired, at least. And nothing for it. This is the thing. So we have... we have dinosaurs. And that's going to have to be good enough. It would, in this situation, be kind of nice if we could spend some time building up some siege towers. But if we don't do the uh, fight right now, the other army is going to turn around and take away our numerical advantage. So let's do it. The balance of power bar on that um, suggests that we will lose. But I find that the balance of power bar dramatically overestimates the effect that walls have on the battle. I think we're going to win. I just think we're going to get shredded in the process. And we do have to be careful. They have, like, ten units of ranged between the two armies. So, our flyers are not going to have the effect we would like them to have right away. We're going to have to play kind of carefully here. And I'm hoping that Lord Croak shows up quickly. Okay, the good news is it looks like there's a nice dead zone over here that we can park the, uh, the melee units in while we figure things out. I don't think we need to gamble on that. Okay, so it doesn't really, it doesn't tell me which army is which. 
Yes, I know they're both Tlaqua. All of my armies are Tlaqua. Okay, well, that's really annoying. So I guess we want to... There's two, two ways we can go about this. We can have everybody set up on this side and try to draw all of the enemies this way so that the reinforcement armies will be unharried as they approach. Or we can set up over here so that we can really project a lot of force. Keep in mind, I think it is the case that the front half of each army will show up, which means that neither one of the reinforcement groups will have a proper dinosaur. So they probably won't be able to break the gate. I guess we could... We could have uh, the Blessed Stegodon. Yeah, like, okay, so we could set up everybody over here and have the Blessed Stegodon be, like, there. And then once the fight starts, just have it run to the other gate. Put a Stegodon in each gate. I actually kind of like that plan. Alright. Let's start with... Sure, whatever. Just, just be close. Let's start by putting all of these ground units over here, and we're going to head for that dead zone as quickly as possible. And then the thunderous one goes directly for the gate. Unfortunately, he's going to get shot up quite a bit more than the Carnosaur does, because he's not nearly as fast. You start right here. I'm hoping that by doing it this way, we will have made it so they don't set up on this wall at all. Uh, we were successful. Okay. Jesus, that's a lot of ranged units. They have their flamethrowing iron, dra iron drakes, and this is not great. Okay. We're going to have to watch him because shift queuing attack orders has not been great lately. Can I not order you to attack the gate? Okay, I had to put him in melee mode. Actually, I had to remember to put you in melee mode, too. I do not want you to shoot at the gate. I want you to just... Run over and murder it with your huge dinosaur face. Okay, all of the ground units over here, including you, need to get up against the wall. There we go. See, I can't, I can't quite, there we go. Good enough. Uh, now, it is worth noting that they have organ gun and cannon units. And while ordinarily you think of these as like straight firing units, they do fire in an arc, so they can launch over the wall at units that are not close to the wall. But once we draw up, it should be pretty hard for them to get their uh, to get their shots in. And with the flying units, I honestly am not sure what the best way to do this is going to be. We have to be pretty careful about their exposure. It looks like they actually didn't put a lot of ranged units on the ground over here, though. So maybe our flyers can line up like this. We should be able to harass their ranged units while not being, uh, not suffering many reprisals. Ranged units on the wall can pretty much only face forward or backwards, so they're, they're not going to be able to shoot us very much from the side. And keep in mind, all of the flying units in all three of these armies are Fire Leech Bola units. And yeah, unfortunately, we're going to have to come over here and do this uh, frequently. We grab people and tell them to get over this away. Because uh, there's no way to set waypoints for approaching units, even though that's like a really obvious thing that ought to exist. I I'm definitely worried. Let's see, we're taking some uh, <laughs> taking some fire, unfortunately, from their very good towers here. Let's get over here and continue. Issuing orders. Yeah, on this side, it's just going to be all Sauruses, because the front half of both of these armies is entirely Sauruses. They'll make a good distraction, at least. Alright, we don't have any actually good spells, right? We have Wind Blast, which is not going to do any damage to, or to Dwarves. Soul Quench, which is going to do some, but not a lot. Pause Protection, which will at least give armor. And Tempest, which will have no effect, because the enemy has no flying units. Okay, so I think all of our winds of magic are Lord Croaks. Speaking of who. Alright, so... I should probably command group these flyers. And the question is, how many, how many rocks do we want to spend on these initial groups? Okay, let's start by shooting at the Quarlers with most of our attacks. 
Uh, they're starting to bring in some of the ranged. We have to watch out for ranged units getting over here. Uh, not that we, not that they pose a threat to this number of pterodons, but we just got to make sure that we're attacking them as soon as they show up. It looks like they're moving a lot of the ranged over toward the sources, which is actually really bad for us. Sources are extremely slow, and they will not be able to catch the people who are shooting at them. They're tough, and they have shields. They won't take a lot of damage, but I think it's possible that even dwarves could kite us. Try to get actually inside the walls here. Okay, the Pterodon, or the Pterodon, the Stegodon has made it. Wow. What the hell? Dwarf Quarlers have, oh, Bugman's Rangers, have a very impressive range. Okay, so we should burn through them pretty quickly. We can't really offer any spell assistance. We're pretty much just going to have to wait until the door is cracked on this side. And over here, we need to just make sure, okay, it looks like everybody's moving. You guys have, yes, you have orders. All right, we almost have... Somebody over to the gates. Unfortunately, they have arrived. And they are taking control of the towers. For some reason, they have control of this tower, despite the fact that they don't... I guess those dwarves are technically in there? Yeah. We're gonna take a lot of damage. Take a lot of damage. But the most important thing right now is this focus. We have to get through all of this stuff very quickly. They are firing cannons at us. We've inquired, uh, uncovered hidden foes. For some reason, we're able to tell that those rangers are there, despite not being anywhere near them and having a big wall between us and them. All right, so I'm going to try to save up our, uh, our bombs here, because it looks like we don't really need them. Never mind. Looks like we need them. These guys have to get bombed on. Trying to draw... There we go. Trying to draw the formation over them. It's usually the case that uh, ranged units can't turn sideways on the wall, but I guess it maybe is because these guys are such a small unit that their entire unit can fit sideways on the wall. They're able to do it. Getting some good damage done. I'm going to drop another load of bombs on the flamethrowers. Okay, the gates are open, so let's reconfigure here. First of all, make sure that these new units coming in. Okay, I think that's the last one. So I think we're at 40 now, I believe. Okay. With the gates open, uh, they should not have control of this tower for very long. I think we've, we've killed a lot of the units that were over here, and many of the others will be fleeing, hopefully. But we are probably... And do I even want to go in there? Now that we have the gate open, they stacked up so much stuff right there. Let's take our two units of salamanders and set them up like right here. Have this guy fall back. And we don't really have any other range to work with. I guess the, um, this is the chameleon skinks can also get over here. We'll see if they want to come out a little bit, and if they don't, then we will uh, wait until the birds have cleaned things up a little bit more. Okay, so the Ironbreakers are backing off. Okay, we got the we got some of the grenade dwarves to throw a bunch of grenades at the gate as we ran away. That's good. We wasted some of their ammo. Yeah, look at how hardy these dwarf units are. They have no intention of retreating. They are just gonna stand and fight until every single one of them is actually killed. Very frustrating. The good, the good news is, I think we might be able to work with that. Okay, the salamanders are in position, I see. We still have lots and lots and lots of bombs available for this thick, dense... Uh, group of melee troops here. I just really want to get through the flamethrowers first because I'm very concerned about them. And they're they're such a small unit that like a lot of the bombs don't actually make contact. A small high health unit. Okay, 
Also, keep in mind, as long as we're hanging out here, we're, uh, we're suffering from the ranged. Oh, just trying to draw a shape on the ground, not telling you to attack. See, some of the, some of our birds are just ignoring their orders, which is kind of frustrating. You can see, like, seven of the ten guys went where I told them to, and then the others stayed behind. It is, at this point, probably the case that we could just fly over and kill the siege crews. They've abandoned them. That might actually be the move. Now, we've... It's hard to not want to drop a bunch of rocks over here. But yeah, let's have everybody... Should we stop and kill these guys on the way? Maybe. Also, how's this gate going? Is this almost down? Okay, it it does appear to actually be open. Sometimes it's hard to tell, you know, whether it's whether it's really open or pretend open, but I think this one's really open. So, everybody in, basically. I don't think we have a play here that isn't just everybody on this side charges. Sorry, not you. You guys also should be charging. Lord Croak is going to have to take a slightly more careful approach. It's a shame he's not over here, actually, where, where they're really dense. And he's just going to chill out near the wall. Okay. So, what do we want to do with the flyers? Do we want to stop and kill these thunderers? Probably. Alright, here's what we're going to do. Everybody come over and kill these thunderers. We're going to drop a couple units of, maybe even only one unit of rocks as we go past here. Our strategy on the ground seems pretty effective outside the gate, like they're not actually getting a lot of hits on us or anything. Wow, the frame rate's so bad that I can't even issue, um, I can't even issue the orders. Looking for a unit that has a lot of their health left. Really, I'm looking for a unit that has a high remaining entity count, but... Uh, it's tough to eyeball, so I'm using health as proxy. Okay, we've gotten some pretty good damage out here. You guys break them down a little bit faster. I think we're going to have to go after these dudes. And does the lead pterodon? Nope. Who has rocks? Somebody get over here and do rocks. The amount of micro that it takes to use the, uh, the rocks effectively is definitely detrimental in a fight like this. Uh, the explosions from the rock dropping also uh, do make their lives a little bit more difficult. In the sense that... Uh, it, uh, it breaks their formations, so there's some value to that as well. All right, yep, we're just going to have to endure a huge amount of range damage. And you can see, like, we took a lot of tower fire as we were getting in here. But the worst of it should be over on this side. So we're going to be able to push the city center uh, through these groups of ranged. Krokgar himself should be reasonably good at fighting these ranged units. Uh, you focus here. So these are longbeards with great weapons. Iron Breakers, yeah, the dudes from the... All the dudes from up on the top. Well, let's fire off the first of many shots of our Supreme Shield. I want it, like, right here. Okay, you guys are still very slowly approaching. And now that the, um... Now that the guys on this side are all... Well, they're not all shredded, but they're pretty shredded... I wonder if it's a good I wonder if it's a good time to press forward or if we would still get totally wrecked cuz this army is a little bit light on um melee troops. We have a unit of pterodon riders fleeing the field. It's just like the most cowardice. Yeah, see the instant we the instant we turned around to try to take advantage of their siege crews being undefended, they became defended again. This is kind of what I was afraid of. Come on. 
boy, they did a really good job of spreading out so that there was no period during that time where where many of them were over top of the enemy. Okay, who here still has bombs? Pretty small number of bombs, but we have them. Come on. Okay, you guys are really taking your time, huh? Okay, well, the good news, if you want to see it as good news, is that uh, some of the units of range that were going to fight over here at the gate have instead fled to the city center. Also, now that we are up on... Uh, now that we are inside the city, we can have our guys turn around and climb up the inside of the wall and go after the ranged units, and I think we should definitely do that. Uh, unfortunately, this is the only unit of Red Crested Skinks, because I'd much rather have Red Crested Skinks doing this than, um, than Sauruses. The Skinks are so much better at killing. Hmm. Rangers aren't that heavily armored. I'm going to give them a little baby explosion. Okay, you're just doing what you do. Unfortunately, there's not like a ton of commanding we can do here because everybody's just all on top of each other. Not a lot of strategy to apply. That one unit of flyers has left the field, so we now have another unit in here. Let's get them in here. That's a pretty good drop for the small number of birds that are left in that unit. Boy, they're really just, there are not a lot of flyers left at all. We've done some good damage with them. Keep in mind that the back half of this battle is going to be, uh, the back half of our reinforcements is just going to be all uh, range units. So, <sighs> I think I'm going to... Try to prefer to send ground units over to this front, because we're holding okay at the other side. What is the range of this? Okay, it is not very long. Yeah, we're holding okay at the other side. There's not a lot of actual damage being done here, but we're keeping a lot of their units busy. I want to really just mash as many people through this gate as possible. Our Stegodon has taken a lot of damage. That's bad. Let's get get a couple more units of spears up on the wall if we can. For some reason, I can't issue attack orders on because oh, that's because I clicked on Lord Croak. Yeah, spears up on the wall, clubs fighting the uh, the dwarves is what I would like. Okay, that small explosion seems to have accomplished very little, remarkably little. Gotta keep casting the big bubble over and over again. Let's try a slightly larger deliverance over here, maybe? I, I don't know how effective this is going to be. Now, let's go for the one that's good against armor, I guess. Let's try to figure out, like, where... Okay, those guys are dwarves, these guys are dwarves. Right here, it should be pretty effective. Let's hope. And I think the flying units are just uh, just about dead, really. I don't know if there's a lot we can do for them at this point. Who has who has bombs left? Anybody have bombs? We should definitely make sure we spend as many of those as possible. And then, is it attack the cannon at this point? Or do we want to maybe focus on the Thunderers? Focus on the Rangers? Just try to clear out some more... Yeah, because we're not going to do enough damage to kill a siege crew in the time we have left. Let's see if we can drive a unit or two off of the map. Yeah, this explosion was fine, I guess. Our guards actually having a hell of a time dealing any damage for some reason. Dwarf range units just being way tougher than they ought to be. Okay, you 
guys are on the move as much as you can be. So they still have control of this tower, but they do not have control of this tower. I'm wondering if we maybe want to... Salamanders are pretty fast, right? We maybe have some more salamanders commit to, uh, to a position up here. Just try to belch fire over the wall. What are you guys doing? Why, why is it taking these sources so, so much time to approach the gate? Uh, you know what? I might have... I might actually have a unit of Soros Warriors. Okay, so hold on. Half of this unit is outside the walls. Where's the rest of it? Because that, that order, uh, yeah, that order arrow came from over here. Never mind. Who's, like, still mostly outside the walls? The units are all screwed up here. Yeah, somebody somebody actually get up on the wall. Because we're, we're getting caught here. Climbing the walls is very tiring, but we can come around the backside of the enemy units this way. Let's see. These are dwarf warriors with great weapons. Let's see if we can get the dinosaur to chase. And I'd hate to lose this blessed stegodon, because we cannot get another one of these. We can hire normal stegodons now, but obviously they're not as good. So if we could figure out a good way... I guess what we really want to do with this guy is just have him disengage, right? Because we could put him back in ranged mode and he could fire from a distance. Let's see if we can micro him out of direct contact with quite so many dwarves. Also, I think I'm going to cause a small explosion over here near Proctar. Proctar's a legendary lord, remember, so he can't be killed. Even if he does manage to get wounded out here somehow, uh, he'll just become temporarily wounded. He's doing a pretty good, a good job of just wading through the dwarves. He's a pretty impressive mass. Right, get over here. Get out of melee mode. And as soon as we have a nice clear shot, we're just going to start working these guys, but from a distance. And we're close enough here that uh, the skinks on the back of the dinosaur are throwing uh, javelins. Okay. Uh, nobody's actually up on the walls enough for me to issue an order, I don't think. Let's actually let them get up there a little bit so that they don't mistake me clicking on these archers as telling them to go around through the door. And the ancient Stegodon with his engine of the gods just needs to get through. We got more reinforcements coming in. Salamanders. Okay, the other flyers are starting to show up. The ancient Salamander and the Bastilodon with the revivification crystal all need to get over here. I think if we can get the revivification crystal in close enough to these guys, this group of units is going to be such a huge pain in the ass to fight. All right, got a couple of new flyers, and I think the move with them is probably to help. Yeah, it's probably to help uh, this situation here. We've done a good job of, like, leaving these guys over here has kept a large number of their ranged units busy not fighting us for a long time, which has been really great. I right, get down there and show them who's boss. The range units on the walls are losing, slower than I would like, but losing. You guys should get up there and do a thing. Okay, we should be able to clean that up pretty quickly. I think the Blessed Stegodon probably won't be taking a lot of damage at this point. And this one unit of um, Soros Warriors of Shields has, has been holding its own up here for quite a while. Let's have you disengage. Okay, shield time again. Oh, and the Engine of the Gods guy is here. So, encouraged by nearby unit, winded, but powerful. So, his actual melee attack and defense are not super great, but he'll be throwing people around. The skinks on his back are throwing stuff, and let's just give this a shot. It says it's good against armor. Obviously, dwarves are somewhat resistant to magic, but let's see what this actually does. 
I'm very curious about this. Wow. That looks really cool. Also, very demoralizing to be caught in it, apparently. Uh, so, wind-type spells, directional spells like that, bounce off of walls, if you're wondering why it drew over them twice. Alright, stay focused. I do believe we are winning this front, and they're just... They're so afraid that we're going to push through the gate that they don't want to abandon this side, even though keeping these many unit, units at this side is absolutely killing them. So what do they still have back here? There's a pretty damaged unit of Thunderers that's headed forward. There are nine Quarrelers left in that unit. So basically, at this point, these two units of Flyers could probably come back here and, uh, and clean up the Siege Engines. Let's... Let's do that. I think the sources uh, are on the ground now. They have this under control. You guys could probably... Yeah, just try to keep the great weapons away from the dinosaurs for the moment. We have enough dudes heading up on the wall. I don't think we need to worry about that anymore. Okay, and the ranged units are, like, engaged in melee. Krukgar should probably hit his potion of healing. He is really making me nervous. I would love it if he would survive the battle. We really we need to gather XP on him. Okay. Let's do this. I think probably what we want to do here is one bomb for the Thunderers. And then I don't even know what to do with the other bomb, but probably we don't need to use it on these Quarrelers, is my guess. Trying to get them to approach in a wide formation here. Oh, that's right. Some of their Rangers are stealthy. So those guys over there, the stealthy ones that we just revealed, they're probably getting the other bomb. Let's try to get rid of these dwarves as quickly as possible. We haven't had another unit die in a minute, so no, uh, nobody new approaching from the side of the map. Okay, Krokkar's healing potion actually got him uh, for quite a bit. All right, we are eight seconds away from doing the thing again. This being upgraded all the way is really powerful. It is so hard to get salamanders to, sh to set up in wide formations. Okay, what the hell is going on with these thunderers? Why are they still alive? It's so, so hard to kill dwarves. There are four thunderers remaining. They actually are going to... One. They're actually going to fight until they are all dead. They make impressive opponents. You gotta give them that. You guys work on them. Really? You're gonna flee now in our moment of triumph? This would be a really good time, actually, for you to turn around and shoot those quarrelers. Ugh. Annoying. What are you guys doing? Fight. Why, why are there so many... Apparently they had forgotten their fight orders. That's annoying. Sometimes units do that. I'm never quite sure what causes it. They just like totally forget what they were doing. Alright, so we'll save the other charge of the engine of the gods, because I think this this theater is pretty one at this point. Uh croak. Make sure we're continuing to fill the bar. This is the revivification crystal. Start using those charges. There are many among us who need to be revived. Alright, one more unit of flyers in. Okay, so at this point we have almost actually killed every dwarf who has a ranged weapon. Getting very, very close. One thing I definitely want to make sure we get done is uh, we want this cannon crew completely shattered by the time the uh, dinosaurs are headed toward the center of the map. Because if the dinosaurs are still up, the cannon is going to be very... or if the cannon is still up, it's going to be very, very effective. 
you guys both work the organ gun. The organ gun's way better at hurting flyers. Hey, Krokar! Did you forget what you were doing? He's not super sharp. Got a couple of seconds left on this. Yeah, it is taking forever. We're getting there. Some of the salamanders are firing up onto the wall. Actually, let's have the ancient salamander get over here. He can he can fire into the backsides of these groups, probably. I forgot to hit that earlier to make them temporarily unkillable. And then I'm going to keep throwing revivification on them. Because they can get up here on the wall and really do some work. Alright. Uh, you guys are not done. That doesn't look like a permanent break to me. I do not want those guys coming back. Sorus should actually kill those guys. Krukgar should be able to catch up over here and do some pretty mean work. Alright, how's this organ gun thing going? You're getting them. Alright, put them off the edge of the map, but I think... I think there are no ranged attacks left in this army. That's not true. These guys are still alive. Somehow the salamanders have not managed to finish the job. You guys could take up an angle that's a little bit more favorable. And these dwarves are just, like, they're content to not participate in the fight as long as we don't have any of these other units participate. That's a, uh, that's an okay trade. See that ancient salamander down there getting, uh, personally involved. He's not shooting at anybody. Alright, well, it looks like we've won this front pretty thoroughly, so... Here's my plan. Just everybody get down here, basically. Very, very slowly, very slowly killing them over here. Uh, not all of these guys are permanently broken, which I guess is a little dangerous. Oh, we have, we have some overzealous sources getting in on some stuff they don't really need to be getting in on. Uh, just kill them or push them off the map or something, but really quickly. I really don't want these Pterodon Riders to be engaged in actual melee with the actual melee units. Well, they almost broke them. Yeah, the ones that the ones that got stuck in actual ground combat are just dead. There's nothing, nothing for them. Is that the ancient salamander firing at that range? Yeah, he actually he does have a shot. Uh, big dinosaurs, Lord Croak. Uh, talk can get over here. I think we're just about done. Krokagar is apparently very terrifying. I think they actually have a pretty big advantage locally. If they were to uh, turn around and focus up, I think we'd have a tough time surviving it. But if they're just going to run and let him stab them in the back with his big spear over and over again, that works fine. Works out just fine for us. These are slayers, yeah. Definitely focus whatever ranged attacks are left on them. Sorry, wait, 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 wait. Sorry, I forgot one of you doesn't have any ammunition. Alright, I think this is where we want to start delivering our, uh, our big remaining attacks. It's tough to want to cast these when he's so far away. Like, when the, uh, when the enemies are still moving around, you know? All right, you guys come back. Yeah, I don't know what they're supposed to do here. Sitting back and letting us shoot them is obviously wrong, but... 
Ah, oh, okay. run out of ammo. That seems like an okay spot to do it. I will say their uh, their lord is still very healthy, and that is gonna it's gonna make this tough because the dwarfs around him are never going to give up. Where is the engine of the gods? I don't want to fire my other burning alignment. Probably like right here, right? No, nope, that's not. I'm not allowed to do that. I must have had the initial target like slightly in the uh, unpathable area. Are you sure you want to be running that way? I would think about this. That's a very visually impressive spell. And, like, very effective even against dwarves. Okay, what is this? This is a unit of iron breakers that remains. Well, you're not allowed to stand over there. Bad news. They're watching for Krokgar. They, they do not want him getting that clean charge. Jesus Christ, that spell. Okay, what is happening here? We have some kind of half units of stuff. Uh, the Blessed Stegadon, I guess, can just keep working on them. It looks like all of this is all of the units that were fighting the ranged up on the walls. These salamanders should probably get over here and uh, start being a part of the thing. Oh, starting to see the... As the dwarves break, the dwarves around them break, and yeah, that's going to touch it off. Are these guys over here giving up too? Yep, alright, we did it. It was a fun battle, at least. So who is not giving up? Oh, there's like a couple of slayers left. Well, I think we could probably fix that. The crazy thing is, they're not, like, gonna run over here and attack, they're just going to stand still until we kill them from a distance. Alright, that seemed like it was pretty effective. Oh no, look at this dude. He's unstoppable. Actually kind of terrifying. <laughs> okay, <laughs> there we go. That was not nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. I think we lost all of the flying units. Well, all of the flying units from the first army retreated anyway. I don't know. Are they all dead? No, some of them are dead. And that is a shame, because, like, these units are, are high XP, right? But on the whole, that went pretty well for what it was. And keeping the ranged units busy with our flyers so that they weren't shooting at the melee units that were approaching over by the second gate, or... I think, I think that did matter. We lost... A bunch of relatively low impact units for for the purposes of the back half of the battle, while keeping a lot of their uh, a lot of their units who get to fight for free from fighting in a in a really meaningful way. Plus, we got to play with some of our new toys. The heal from the revivification crystal does not seem to be very powerful, sadly. Um, but that engine of the gods spell is awesome. Who was it? We, some of our heroes can be mounted on Stegodons with the with the engines, and I hate the mobility loss that comes with that. But I really, really love that spell, so we might we might do some of those. I think it might have been the priests, and the priests don't need the mobility quite as badly as the hero does. It, it might be okay to put a priest on one of those. Alright, so this will not actually remove this faction from the map, because they do still have an army. Uh, we could, you know, we have so much money right now. Just occupy. Alright, province secured. We got a Dragon Bane gem that we have very little use for. A Glyph Necklace that for some reason gives 9% ward save instead of 10%. That's pretty weird. Uh, and then, what do we want to do with this settlement? Well, I mean, first of all, obviously that. Uh, you know what? I don't think we're going to do a lot of recruiting here. I'm going to remove these, and we'll use those slots for, like, uh, a pylon and some other stuff. 
All right, who's got level ups? Yarek's got to level up. What were we doing with Yarek? Yarek should have lightning strike. We were, we were going to start taking spell stuff, but he should have lightning strike. It's a good idea to have it. Pragar sadly did not get a level, despite the fact that he was probably the lord who did the most personal fighting out of all of them. Okay, and then... From the global pool, I think I'm just going to grab two new units of Fire Leech Bolas. Like, the... The composition of this army is fine, I think. Let's just directly replace our losses. Uh, we don't have fire... Yeah, we don't have those guys in the local pool, and the local recruitment buildings are getting destroyed anyway. Okay, who has unassigned skill points? It's Roxper the Skink Chief. Well, there's absolutely... There's not really a, a compelling reason... I guess the normal Stegadon is actually a better melee fighter than the Ancient One. We could pick that mount up, just that he has all of his options available. We have like a handful of skill points left. We could train him up in like Assassinate and Specialist, and then he'd at least have the ability to run out of the army and drop enemies. You know what? That might be worthwhile. Who knows when we might need to do that. Okay, down here, let's go for a Geomantic Pylon. Definitely one of these. Uh, we definitely want to upgrade this. We should keep a little bit of money on hand. Because we don't know exactly how much it's going to cost to resettle Resetra, but... Uh, at least the gold mine's already built. What else do we need here? Nothing, really. Oh, I guess we could, yeah, have one of those. And there's no reason for us to think that um, that the Tomb Kings over here would ever attack us. They are they are all the way in. Okay, so now we have actually completed all of our spell tree stuff. When can we get this uh, next level? Okay, so not a lot of point in taking any of the other ground mounts. We would we would never use them. He has all this good stuff. I guess we can. Yeah, we can level up his scouting. Increase the chance to get magic uh, magic items after combat. And we have military... Uh, we're allowed to move through their territory. Military access. So I think let's do that. Let's leave through their territory. I don't know where we're going. I guess we could wrap around through Lamia and try to do that thing I was talking about. Go up through the mountains. Let's actually see if the dwarves are willing to come around on this yet, because military access with the dwarves would be really helpful. Also, notice the defensive alliance is now red, despite the fact that we are eternally trending upward and we're much more powerful than they are. So where do we want to take Tic-Tac-Toe's army? Do we want to go up through here? Or do we want to try to sneak in the back way? If we went through Misty Mountain, and then through Spite Peak, then through Dringo Rakaz and Valaya's Sorrow... I mean, maybe we could make it through here without having to tread on dwarf ground. Or we could just go to Gorgazan. I think that's, yeah, let's just, let's just go to Gorgazan. Okay, nice to be done with all of this nonsense inside of our borders. You are still trying to catch up with that army. And you now have the option of harassing some orcs. So let's do that. Yeah, sure. Let's attempt to assassinate Ogrok Noxotas. Probably won't work, but we'll probably get some... Oh, never mind. I was going to say we'll probably just get some XP off of this. But hey, that was pretty handy. Okay, you're just exploring northward. How are we doing with these guys? Do they appreciate the things we're doing against the Greenskins? They do. Okay. So we might be able to get to a point with the Border Princes where we could get a treaty or two going. We had a couple of treaties with their previous incarnation. Alright, and now that we've finished our sequence of geological prospecting, probably this is the time to go back for the sequence of Annihilation, right? Money and money and also money. So what do they have left? This army is taking constant attrition damage for not having a uh, not having a home. So they'll probably either hurl themselves against the Wizard Caliph's palace or into our armies over here. And in either of those cases, we should be 100% fine. We still have 10,000 gold. Uh, like I said, I have no idea what it's going to take to resettle uh, Resetra. 
Hold on. Can you move? Are you? Yeah, we're not being we're not being asked to give him orders because he's in a city. But he needs to get running. Okay, so he'll probably be able to attempt that next turn. I'm just going to pass the turn and hold all this money so that we are for certain going to have enough for him to do this. And then we'll we'll figure out what else we want to build next turn. I think we are actually all good. Yeah, Krepis isn't going anywhere. Okay. That battle probably did not have to be that long. <laughs> it's probably a more aggressive style of commanding that would have worked just fine. But if we had lost control over there, if we had if we had seriously lost that battle and our armies had ended up in bad shape, or even if we, well, no, if we had won but come out of it in bad shape, I think we would have been fine. But if we had lost that, uh, then we were in position to end up losing more stuff to the dwarves, right? We don't have a lot of defenses over there, and they are they are in the only part of our empire that doesn't have completely walled cities. Though a little better safe than sorry, basically. Alright, I wonder how long our hero is going to be able to hang out up there before he gets assassinated by a goblin big boss coming out of nowhere. Yeah, Grievitz, this guy. He's coming for us. We may want to run. There's no way we're going to be able to assassinate him. He's level 32. Even if we weren't exhausted from the previous one. And one of these times, he's going to actually kill our hero. And now that we actually have some build-up on our hero, that would be a real shame. Well, maybe this uh, maybe this Tillian dude will ride across and take care of him for us. Wouldn't that be nice? You can see the Warriors of Chaos are now on their second wave, so they have some... They have some strength again. We'll just hope that the coalition of men can hold the northern border for us. Although at this point, um, at this point we are actually free to like go look around the world and figure out what we need to do next. We've dealt with all of the backfield threats. We control the entire southeastern corner of the map, except for the lands owned by people who are 100% uh, loyal to us. Yeah, we I like for the first time in a very long time, perhaps for the first time in the entire campaign, we're sort of just spoiled for options. We don't have anything that needs to happen immediately. Uh, it does warm my heart to see Tillians out here doing this very fine work. And as we're doing uh, hero actions against the orcs again, remember that the uh, I'm sorry, did they just siege Vulture Mountain? How do they think that's going to work? Okay, well, we'll fix that in a moment, and that, that'll be this faction properly eliminated. I'm kind of surprised that they even went for the siege instead of just attacking. So I believe this, yeah, the Shadowgore Warherd is that, um, that Brayherd that spawned up north of us. So it's probably a good idea to keep an eye on them. If they look like they're getting too powerful, we may have to go over and handle that. And is the second wave of Puppets of Chaos? Wow, they're actually showing up as being stronger than we are. That's a little worrying. Those are the ones that spawn down here. I think they might just be going west, though. We're not getting any vision of them at all. Okay, raise or sack three settlements in order to get six Blessed Saurus Spear Shields. Honestly, that's not a bad unit. Those are totally fine. All right, let's start with this so that we know what we're looking at money-wise. Can you resettle this by yourself? That says 2,500 gold colonization cost. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, and then, thank you for your service. We no longer need you. Okay, let's get this repaired. Get our thing established here. And, oh, we have a trade good. Okay, so we can afford to spend all of this money on upgrading our settlements and stuff. Let's let's do all the other stuff we know we need to do this turn. So first things first, who wants to lead the battle? I'm going to have Krokgar lead this battle here. It should be the case that we can just auto-resolve this. I'm going to quick save just in case here. Yeah, okay. Wow, almost no uh, replenishment at all, huh? Okay, you know what? We'll just take the XP. Oh, I forgot that was even a thing. 
Well, whatever. We're not going to get any value out of that buff. So, Greybeard's Prospectors are well and gone. You know, they had they had options. They could have just maintained the thing. Well, the Book of Assure is a pretty, uh, a pretty nice item. They could have just maintained our pacts, and everything would have been fine. Alright, what were we doing with him? I don't even remember. Oh, we were taking yellow line stuff. Yeah, that seems fair. So I don't know exactly where we need all these guys to be, but let's let's head back north at least. Get back up to the coast. Maybe we should consider leaving one of these armies behind. Let's see, we have no growth buildings left anywhere, so our uh our replenishment rate is not great in any of these armies. I'm just thinking we probably want some people around in case... How do you not have anything equipped? Uh, in case the Chaos Dudes do show up. Man Waver, you could have a Man Spawn Sacrifice. We have about a thousand of them. I don't, these banners are kind of garbage, whatever. Okay. Yeah, I might have Ratok. Well, Ratok has all of the coolest dinosaurs, though. You know what we should actually do with him? We should offer to trade some units with Krokgar. Lord Croak has a level up to spend as well. All right, let's let's pass Krokgar a couple of these uh, a couple of these cool dinosaurs. His army's a little weedy at the moment, so maybe let's let's put down two of the units of spears and grab like he probably doesn't need the engine of the gods that much. Um, cause we, we should keep Croak and the Engine of the Gods in different armies. But like, I would like to give him the Revivification Crystal, I think. And, you know, maybe that's the only move. Here, we'll just, we'll just trade one of these guys over. I just want to dinosaur up Krokgar's army a little bit. Okay. Even more replenishment. You know, let's get Tic Tac Toe back into our territory first. Then we'll move him over to where he needs to be. All right, Ratok will actually be able to meet up with Krokgar up here. Finally, and you have to make a decision. I would love to just sit here and do more hero actions, but I guess we're um. We're exhausted anyway. Who owns this? Is this still dwarf owned? Yes, it is. Okay. Running up there isn't going to give us anything else to work with. I'm going to run away from Grievitz. We could do some work on Black Crag, perhaps. Just remember, after you successfully do a, uh, a wounding move, you get very tired. So he wouldn't have been useful this turn anyway. All right, how does Tilia feel about us? They are not trending northward, despite the fact that we now have 20 points of positive hero actions against orcs. I think part of that is just that um, other stuff that we've done is starting to wear off. So we want to level up Mount Arachnos first, because that, uh, that has the trade good. And then let's just go on a quick tour of our territory, right? We got a... Sorry, that's not even the button. We have a lot of regions now, and we need to figure out what needs to be built in all of them. Uh, Vulture Mountain doesn't need to be changed at the moment. The Charnel Valley is actually negative on public order. How is that possible? It is a corruption issue. Oh, uh, because it, it's a it's naturally a Skaven region, and we have that point of chaos corruption from the chaos waves, but we only have one point of local uh, untainted. So probably the best way to deal with that actually is going to be to remove the walls, which we will no longer need. We will build up some of this other stuff, and we're gonna um, we're gonna build one of those purple buildings. They give six points of untainted corruption. That'll solve that problem. Uh, we also are going to need yeah, man. We need a lot of stuff over here. All right, we're gonna have to wait until Karagorid gets upgraded to four before we could build a pylon here. I might want to upgrade this. I'm just thinking uh, to buy us time. Yeah, that's reasonable. Okay, we still have some empty building slots here. We have an empty building slot there. Uh, the Serpent Coast, I don't know that it helps us to do anything with that. 
Don't want to change anything here. Uh, yeah, we have all of them. Basically what I'm looking for is like a place where we have an open slot and we haven't built a financial building. Do we want to build a growth structure here? Oh yeah, Teotihuacan needs a ton of population. Let's do that. Alright, we're making some good moves. Right now, we just have this. We have 20 turns to complete this. Well, what we could do is raise Gorgazan. We're starting to get to the point where we're going to have to... Um, we're going to have to cross Dwarf territory if we want to find more people to fight. So they need to come around on that. Maybe what we need to do is save up a bunch of money and just like offer them a huge amount of gold for military access. That's the thing we can do without the without the extra army for resettling, etc. We're actually making a lot of cash every turn. We could also, I guess, sail across the ocean and burn a couple of things down. I'm not going to conquer anything over here. I don't want to get involved in the tangle of the uh, Hell War in the Forever Jungle. But, wait, Forever War in the Hell Jungle. But we could go over there and burn a couple things down and just leave them empty and then come back home. For the purpose of getting our, uh, our sacred spawning on. The Empire's feeling slightly positive about us again. What is the... This is just showing me, like, roughly their economic power. That's such a... That's such a coarse, abstract measure that I really don't even know what to make of it. Well, we either need the dwarves to take control of Black Crag and Karakade Peaks and also become friendly with us. Friendlier. Or we need to take those two things ourselves. So I think that is probably the next big... The, big, the next big move we're aiming for. Trying to get in over there. It would be helpful if we could get an uh, alliance going with Tilia as well. Because they do own one of the world capitals. One of the great important cities of the world. I'm trying to think. Where else are there? Like, Itza is one in the, in the Hell Jungle. There's a couple... I think that there might be two on Ulthuan. Lothurn at the base, at the, at the very bottom of Ulthuan is one. So if we could get in with the Order of the Lore Masters, maybe? I, that's, that seems very unlikely. It's a shame that Lothurn is somehow the Elf Nation, not the Elf Nation that survived, because we had something going with them. I still don't really understand what happened there. I assume it would make sense if we had seen all of their assets and stuff. I bet what happened is, even though the Order of Lore Masters had way less territory... Uh, and was just generally much weaker. Probably what happened is Lothurn lost all their armies in a couple of bad battles. What's up? Join your war against the top knots. Not just yet. Yeah, Lothurn probably had a couple of bad battles, lost all their armies, and the, the Order of Lore Masters was then much more uh, militarily powerful than them, as long as you only look at the balance of power bar in order to judge that, which I believe is the case with the AI. Still, it's very silly. And at some point we should probably murder Black Buckthorn and his buccaneers, just on general principle. What is this? Why is there a Skaven agent in the water over here? That's a little worrying. Alright, if we don't see any Puppets of Chaos, and it looks like we don't, I think we may... Yeah, I feel safe enough just abandoning this area. If they come over here to get us, we'll have some time to respond. Was I not hiring the right number of units? I thought he needed... Hmm. Well, whatever. We'll we'll march him north. He can, uh, he can recruit... Up at Alhake. 
Also, we're moving north. Okay, we have a lot of dudes up here. So next turn, they can merge in. Yeah, we're ready to make some moves just as soon as we uh, figure out what the best way to make our next move is. Right, let's just go blow up some walls at Black Crag. Make sure everybody knows it was us. Aw, oh, he failed. I don't actually know whether you get um, more diplomatic favor with the enemies of a faction for succeeding with a hero action. Obviously, just performing the action is usually sufficient. I think I prioritize this one so we can cap out the Diamond Mine. And... Uh, we definitely want a pylon. We definitely want... Do we want to put up another growth building? I probably don't want to bother with that. It's probably just uh, just money. Yep, seems perfectly reasonable. We have a lot of public order coming in because we have multiple characters who have... Uh, plus public order in the local region. Let's wait until everybody moves away before... And now you know what? This is this is fine. We can definitely break that down. Especially since we're getting... Uh, we're going to be getting some pylon upgrades here. So, before we spend any money... Let's go talk to the dwarves. <laughs> All here! At this point, military access from them is starting to be pretty critical, so I am willing to uh, I'm willing to pay a significant amount of gold for it. Okay, is there anything they want from me? I will join their war against. Am I not at war with the Warriors of Chaos? Here's the deal. I'll join your war with the Warriors of Chaos. I don't think I'm willing to join their war against the Vampire Counts. We're a little closer to the Vampire Counts. Like, that That could actually end up being a problem for us. And we'll go ahead and join your war against the Top Knots. Oh, they're way into this the, this uh, this agreement now. Could we get this? I suppose. Okay, excellent. Proper alliance... With military access, we're now trending toward 235. So this this is going to keep getting more and more likely. Uh, we did declare on the top knots a little earlier than I would have liked. I would like these armies to be closer, but like there's no way. Even if they had a stack here, which obviously they don't, there's no way they could put any real pressure on us uh, before we could get armies in place to deal with it. Okay, here we can definitely upgrade this, because the Black Pyramid of, Pyramid of Nagash is what's connecting Kemri to the rest of the high-level settlements. So that's actually a pretty high priority. We can get our better quality of... Uh, our better qualities of... What do you call it? Commandments there. And in fact, we can remove the growth building here. We are, we are all good on growth. We're actually going to get to start the final upgrade on Kemri. Okay, where else do we have stuff that needs doing? We just have we have a ton of territory that we have to work through here. Uh, Karag Orud needs this, but we can't quite afford to build it. We are, in fact, a single point of gold short of... Alright, you know what? Let's just hit end turn. We'll just move on. We'll start that upgrade in Karag, Or Karag Orud and the final upgrade in Kemri. I think we'll be able to afford both of those next turn. Uh, and then probably that is where we're going to end the video. I know we didn't actually get a lot of time covered here because we had a great big slowly fought battle to deal with. But uh, finally managing to get the dwarves on side. Finally managing to secure all of our internal space. I'm feeling, I'm feeling very good about the things we did do during this episode. Yeah, there's still this nonsense to deal with. Somehow Clan Moors has escaped our judgment for far too long. So the Dreadfleet is currently showing up as being very weak. And their uh, their main settlement, that one out in the Whirlpool, is one of the important world cities. 
we might want to just have some of our forces break off and go take that over. Granted, we'll have to be a lot more careful about pirates declaring war on, war on us and trying to take it back. Yeah, I don't know. We, we might try something like that. So I think uh, Tic-Tac-Toe just turns north now. We know that these are Skaven settlements and we know that we can take some of them back with just Tic-Tac-Toe's incredibly powerful army. And the rest of us will head like this. We're probably going to unite almost all of our forces. We might want to leave one army back just to play generic defense against anybody who might sail down to fight us. I don't know whose job that would be. Uh, maybe it's even uh, Crepus, right? Because Skaven Blight should be mostly able to tend to itself now, so maybe what we do is we move Crepus to Sartosa, where he's like a turn of sailing away from here and a turn of sailing away from the mainland, and we just have him play like zone defense down here. Honestly, that's that's a pretty good idea. And that means we don't have to pay for another whole army, so we get to keep our extremely high income, which we need to remodel the huge amount of territory that we've taken over. And it looks like, I mean, maybe I'm getting overconfident here, maybe I am cursing us, but fingers crossed, it looks like the forces of chaos might totally ignore us for the entirety of the game, at least until we're ready to go to them and uh, challenge. And Tilia probably likes... Yes, Tilia likes our uh, our agreements with the dwarves and stuff. Okay. We're going to do the, the standard, uh, once it's our turn again here, the standard going through our near allies and seeing if we can push any contracts on them. We probably don't want to spend any gold on doing that, though, because we have a lot of very expensive building upgrades left to do. It looks like the Warherd of Chaos is just about defeated... Krepus could probably finish off Black Buckthorn. He's still sailing around with only 13 units to his name. And I believe Sartosa actually has recruitment buildings, right? I think we can I think we can buff up Krepus' army down there. Alright, let's just do a couple of things here at the start of our turn, because otherwise I'll forget. As soon as... there we go. Elves are still passing around the Sword of Cain. Not my concern. There's four points of untainted, and it upgrades to six and eventually eight. Four points of untainted will be good enough to solve the problem. Uh, and Camry, we need to do that. Okay. And we actually still have some money to play with, which is nice. So we'll figure out all of that stuff next time. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. Come back next time on Monday for the beginning of the next stage of our great plan. And we'll see you then.